Okay, in this video we're going to look at the notion of multiplicative inverses modulo n. And so by that I mean um, when can we find inverse pairs so that when we multiply them we get 1 mod n. So that's our goal. So let's uh, look at an example um, as some motivation to get started. So let's say n equals 9. And um, that means we only need to really look at the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Because those are the minimal residues modulo 9. So now, notice it's obvious that 1 has an inverse mod 9, and that's because 1 times 1 is congruent to 1 mod 9, and so 1 will always have an inverse mod n for any n, and here we could write 1 inverse equals 1. Good. Now let's look at 2. So if we multiply 2 by any of these residues modulo n, um, let's see if we ever get 1. So 2 times 3 is 6, so that's not 1 mod n. 2 times 4 is 8, that's not 1 mod n. But 2 times 5 is 10, which 10 is 1 mod n. So here we have 2 times 5 is congruent to 1 mod n. And so that's equivalent to saying that 2 inverse is equal to 5 mod n. And likewise, 5 inverse is congruent to 2 mod 9. Good. So we've taken care of 1, 2, and 5. Obviously 0 doesn't have an inverse modulo n for any n because 0 times anything is 0. You can't ever get to 1. So let's look at some others. <clears throat> so, um, so we have we've taken care of 0, 1, 2. Um, so let's look at 3. So let's do 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 1 is equal to 3, that's not equal to 1. 3 times 2 is equal to 6, again that's not 1. 3 times 3 is 9, that's 0 mod n. 3 times 4 is 12, which is 3 mod n. And now we can keep going. And what you'll notice is that 3 times x is not congruent to 1 mod n for all x. Good. So we'll prove this why, why this is the case in just a second, but um, needless to say, 3 will not have an inverse mod n. So here we have, so 0 doesn't, 3 doesn't. So let's look at 4. And so 4 times 4 is 16, so that's not 1 mod n. But maybe let's look at uh, 4 times 7 is 28, and 28 is 1 more than 27. So here we have 4 times 7 is congruent to 1 mod 9. <clears throat> Good. And so that's equivalent to saying that 4 inverse is 7 mod 9, and likewise 7 inverse is 4 mod 9. Good. So all at once we've taken care of 4 and we've taken care of 7. We've also taken care of 5 from before. Now you can play around with 6 the same way that we played around with 3 and you'll notice that 6x is not congruent to 1 mod 9 for all x. So you can't even get off the ground there. So 6 does not have an inverse. And now if we look at 8, 8 times 8 is 64, which is 1, minus, 1 more than 63. So that means 8 times 8 is congruent to 1 mod 9. In other words, 8 inverse is 8. Which makes a lot of sense because modulo 9, 8 is equal to minus 1. And obviously minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. Okay, great. So what we've noticed is that 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8 all have inverses modulo 9. 
And what is similar about them is they all are relatively prime to nine. And that is, in fact, the defining property of elements that are invertible modulo n. So let's clean this up and we'll prove uh, this statement in general. Okay, so previously we gained some evidence to say that this statement should be true. So now we'll go ahead and prove this statement. So the statement is um, an integer a is invertible modulo n if and only if the GCD of a and n equals one. So, let's look at the proof. So let's start with the forward direction. So that means we want to suppose that A um, is invertible mod N. So in other words, there is a B in Z such that A times B is congruent to 1 mod N. Great. Now, notice that allows us to say that N divides AB minus 1. So that's the definition of congruence modulo N. Good. But that tells us that AB minus 1 equals N times K for some K which is an integer. Good. And then what that tells us is that a, B minus N, K is equal to 1. Good. But now we know all linear combinations of A and N are multiples of the GCD. So from before, we know that this has to be some multiple of the GCD of um, A and N. Good. So we've got the GCD of A and N divides 1, but that means that the GCD of A and N must be equal to 1. Okay, good. So now let's go in the reverse direction. So let's suppose the GCD of A and N equals 1. Um, so there are integers x and y such that ax plus ny equals 1. Good. So we've proven that on the channel before. And now we can write um, ax equals um, 1 minus ny, which is the same thing as saying ax is congruent to 1 mod n. So this number x that we get from the extended Euclidean algorithm is in fact the inverse of a modulo n. Okay, good. So that'll be the end of this video. We'll do another one where we give an example of finding inverses mod n.